What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over leak code 111, minimum depth of a binary tree. First we'll go over the input and the output, then we'll look at the diagrams, and finally we'll look at the code and complexity. So the input is going to be a binary tree, and the output is going to be an integer. This integer represents the depth from the root node to the nearest leaf node. So for this example, if 3 is the input, 3 to 9 has a depth of 2, 3 to 15 has a depth of 3, and 3 to 7 has a depth of 3. We want the minimum out of all such depths that go from the root to all the leaf nodes. So in this case, it's 2, so that's going to be our output. We can approach the problem using BFS and DFS. With BFS, we can look at the tree layer by layer. And we know that since we want the minimum depth, the minute we hit a layer, which has a leaf node, we can return the number of layers we've counted. So in this example, let's say we're starting from three, we go through the first level or layer, then we get to the second level, and once we hit nine, we know that yes, I hit a leaf node, and all I had to do was keep track, one, two, of how many layers I've traversed. Once we've done that, we simply return, and that's going to be our answer. DFS, we're going to do it recursively, so let's come up with our base cases. If we have a root, which is null, we return 0. If we have a root, which is simply one number, or just one node, we're going to return 1. So when we ask our root, tell me your minimum depth, it's going to say, hold on, let me ask my left and right child. And they're going to recursively ask their children the same thing. So 3 is going to ask 9 and 20, and they're both going to say, wait. So 9 is a base case, like here, so it's going to return 1. 20 is going to say, hold on. So it asks its children, and it asks 15 and 7. 15 and 7 are both base cases, so they both return 1. And 20 is going to do a comparison. It picks the minimum out of 1, 1, and it adds 1 to whatever result it had, because it's going to include itself. Then 20 returns 2 back to 3. And then the final root, 3, is going to decide between 1 and 2. And it's going to pick one because it wants the minimum and add itself to whatever answer it got and return that. So it's going to return two. The BFS code, first we initialize a queue and we load the root node into the queue. We also initialize a count variable and we're going to use that to keep track of how many layers we've crossed. So we do a regular BFS and every time we encounter a new layer, which is the for loop, we increment the count. And at each layer, we're going to pull the queue. If the node that we pulled is a leaf node, immediately we return the count. Otherwise, like a regular BFS, we just add it into the queue if the cur.left is not null and the cur.right is not null. If we can't find anything, then we just return zero. For DFS, we first take care of the base cases. If a root is null, we return zero. If a root is a leaf node with the left and right as null, we return one. Otherwise, the node that we're visiting is going to recursively ask its left and right child, hey, tell me your guys' minimum, and I'll check it with what I have. Then it checks left and right, and it takes the minimum of that and adds one to return to its parent. Here's the time and space complexity. For both BFS and DFS, the worst case is going to be O of n, because we might have to visit every single node. For the space complexity, the BFS is going to have a space complexity which is equal to the widest row in the tree because we'll be storing it in the queue. And for DFS, I'm going to say it's O of 1 because we're not using any additional data structures. Although if you consider the stack space to be space, then it's going to be not constant time. So that's how you solve elite code 111, minimum depth of a binary tree. If you like the video, please thumbs up, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.